Welcome to video 4 in the Jiprock DIY series. In this video we'll be looking at how to set Jiprock plasterboard, including recessed edge joints, internal and external wall corners and square setting ceilings. These steps will help you create the best possible finish ready for painting and decorating. Proper setting is important to ensure that the joints aren't visible, particularly when they contribute to bigger areas of walls and ceilings in critical lighting conditions. For more information on critical lighting conditions, check out the glancing light brochure in the Jiprock Residential Installation Guide, both available from jiprock.com.au. The Jiprock jointing system is made up of a first coat, which includes jointing compound and reinforcing tape, followed by two further coats of compound. There are two types of Jiprock jointing systems, professional and all-purpose. For larger projects and the highest level of finish, the professional system is recommended, but can be a little tricky for first-timers. It uses a combination of two layers of base coats plus one layer of topping compound to create a quality and high-performance joint. The all-purpose system uses three coats of a single product for a convenient and strong joint that is ideal for smaller jobs or DIY. Let's find out a bit more about the jointing compounds. Jiprock base coat set by chemical reaction rather than drying, which leads to a stronger bond and allows the formulation of products with different setting times. These base coats are supplied as a dry powder. With working times of between 20 and 90 minutes after mixing, you can choose the product that works best for you. Jiprock topping compounds are specifically designed to provide a smooth, easy to sand finish that makes the perfect substrate for paint or wallpaper. They are supplied pre-mixed in pails and dry through evaporation. The Jiprock DIY range includes ready-mixed multi-purpose joint compound in convenient 3 and 6 kilogram buckets for small jobs. For bigger jobs, there's a range of all-purpose compounds available in 15 to 20 kilogram pails. All-purpose compounds take longer to dry than dry mixed setting compounds and should be left for 24 hours between coats. If you're tackling a wet area, it's important to note that there are some specific requirements for setting joints. These are fully detailed in the Jiprock Residential Installation Guide. Once you've decided which compounds you're going to use, you'll need some other tools and accessories. It's a good idea to have a dust mask and safety glasses handy if you're working in a dusty environment and if you have very sensitive skin, you may want to consider wearing gloves. If you're using dry compounds, you'll need a clean bucket and water for mixing. A roll of Jiprock perforated paper tape. For tools, you can choose disposable plastic tools for smaller jobs or professional steel tools that you can clean up and use for future projects. You'll need broad knives or trowels in 150mm, 200mm and 300mm. A curved trowel for the finish coat is optional. An internal corner trowel. A hawk is also a good idea to make loading your trowel a lot easier. First, let's look at recessed joints. If you're using a dry base coat, mix it according to the instructions on the pack to a creamy consistency. Make sure you don't use a steel broad knife as this can scrape the inside of the bucket, leaving small bits of plastic in the mix that can make score marks in your joint. Start by measuring out the length of Jiprock perforated paper tape you'll need for the joint. Next, fill the recess fully with the first coat of base coat or all-purpose compound using a 150mm broad knife. Bed the paper reinforcing tape into the centre of the joint and cover lightly with additional compound. It is important to ensure that the tape is installed so that the natural centre crease points towards the joint. Cover all fastener heads and fill any surface damage with compound. Refer to video 7 for tips on rectifying damage. Allow base coat to set for at least one hour and all-purpose compound to dry for at least 24 hours before applying the next coat. When the tape coat is dry, scrape or sand off any lumps and apply a second coat around 170 to 200 mm wide using the 200 mm broad knife finishing slightly wider than the previous coat. Smooth down the joint edges with a trowel to reduce the need for sanding later. Allow base coat to set for at least one hour and all-purpose compound to dry for at least 24 hours before applying the finish coat. When the second coat is dry, scrape or sand off any remnants and apply a thin finish coat of topping compound or all-purpose compound around 250mm wide using your largest broad knife or trowel. 
feather the joint edges with a trowel so you'll have less to sand later. Apply a coat to all fastener heads in a different direction to the previous coat and extending around 25mm further beyond it. Allow the finished coat to dry for at least 24 hours before sanding. When two non-recessed board edges meet, this is called a butt joint. The process for butt joints is the same as that for recessed joints, with the exception that each coat of compound extends further to create a gradual camber each side of the joint to minimise its visual impact. First, apply a coat of base coat or all-purpose compound centrally over the joint with a 150mm broad knife. Bed in the tape with a natural crease pointing toward the joint and cover the tape with compound about 120 to 150 millimetres each side of the joint. The second coat of a butt joint extends the compound to around 200 millimetres each side of the joint. And the final topping coat is applied 250 to 300 millimetres each side of the joint. Soften the outer edges of the compound with a trowel to create a smooth finish. Allow to dry completely before sanding. For setting internal corners, only two coats of compound are required. For the first coat, apply a bed of base coat or all-purpose compound at least one millimetre thick to both sides of the corner. The professionals just use an internal corner trowel for this, but you may find it easier to apply the compound with a broad knife and then use the corner trowel to even out the coat. Fold the Giprock paper tape along its centre line and bed into the corner using the corner trowel. Cover the tape lightly with joint compound. Smooth the compound and allow it to set or dry before applying the finish coat. When the tape coat is dry, apply a coat of topping compound or a second coat of all-purpose compound using a broad knife and an internal corner trowel extending at least 100mm each side of the joint. Allow to dry for at least 24 hours before final sanding. For external corners we use the same three coat jointing system on top of the external corner bead as for the rest of the wall. Using a 150mm broad knife, apply a coat of base coat or all-purpose compound over your fixed metal angle, about 150mm wide on both sides of the corner. Make sure that the compound completely fills the void behind the bead and covers all perforations. Allow at least one hour for base coat to set or 24 hours for all-purpose to dry. Scrape off or sand any lumps or ridges and apply a second coat of base coat or all-purpose joint compound about 200mm wide using a 200mm broad knife. Blend the outer edges of the compound to the plasterboard. Allow to set or dry before applying the final topping coat. Using a 300mm broad knife, apply a coat of topping compound or all-purpose compound about 300mm wide on both sides of the corner. Ensure the compound is smooth and completely fills the surface to the outer face of the protruding metal nib. Smooth the outer edges of the compound with a broad knife to remove any ridges and to reduce sanding. Allow at least 24 hours to completely dry before sanding. If you're using PVC angle, check out the specific instructions in the residential installation guide. For projects that include square set ceilings or other architectural features, such as bulkheads or niches, you'll follow the same internal and external corner setting procedures for inner and outer angles. Now that all the joints are all set, the next job is sanding to get your surface ready for painting or decorating. For that, you'll need to take a look at video 5 in the Giprock DIY series.